torture of U.S. prisoners at Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq first came to light. Defense Secretary Rumsfeld blamed it on a few bad apples. He was right. What we know now in our fourth story tonight is that the few bad apples were not the torturers, but Rumsfeld himself in a circle that included Mr. Bush, Mr. Cheney, Mr. Wolfowitz, and more. They were the bad apples. And as happens with bad apples, they corrupted others around them. Brigadier General Janice Karpinski ran the U.S. prisons in Iraq after the invasion. Demoted after the Abu Ghraib scandal, she said the torture carried out there was not a few soldiers disobeying orders, but many soldiers obeying orders, orders issued ultimately by Secretary Rumsfeld, who approved torture techniques for Gitmo in Afghanistan. Captain Carolyn Wood told Senator Levin's committee that in January 2003, she saw a PowerPoint presentation of techniques authorized by Rumsfeld. Six months later, she was the interrogation officer in charge at Abu Ghraib. In August 2003, Gitmo Commander Major General Jeffrey Miller arrived in Iraq telling the commander of the 205th Military Intelligence Brigade, quote, we had to get tougher with the detainees. Gitmo, too, had been using torture techniques authorized by Rumsfeld. But it was Private Lindy England who spent a year and a half in prison, Corporal Charles Grainer who did four years, and while McCain and other Republicans urged President Obama not to look back, Mr. Grainer is still looking forward to six more years in prison. And with us here tonight is former Brigadier General Janice Karpinski, former commander of the U.S. prisons in Iraq, author of One Woman's Army, the commanding general of Abu Ghraib tells her story. Thank you greatly for joining us. Thank you very much. What does the Levin Report tell us about this prison and what happened there? Uh, it basically says there's a direct line from these memorandums, the policies and the permissions and the directives mm -hmm. included in those memorandums through... General Miller at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, migrated directly with General Miller and his Tiger team of about 24 people who came to advise the military intelligence interrogators of these harsher interrogation techniques. Straight line. Regardless of whether Rumsfeld authorized this with memos or with a nudge and a wink, however he did it, what should U.S. troops have done, do you suppose? Should they, should they have disobeyed orders? Should they have... Uh, been conscientious objectors in this situation? What situation were they faced with and what was the, the correct course? Well, I had the opportunity uh, over the last couple of months to, for the first time, mm. to see and to meet some of the soldiers uh, that were the so-called seven bad apples. Mm -hmm. um, and to a soldier, uh, independently, because they were not sitting in a group, they said that they were, these contractors were giving them the orders when a soldier, uh, a sergeant as a matter of fact, said he went to his chain of command. He went to his first sergeant. He went to the company commander and said, look, I don't like what's going on over there. Mm -hmm. And they said, look, the military intelligence is making the rules out here. You do what they're telling you to do. And he said he spent one more night over there and then he went back to the company commander and he said, no, I'm not. You move me. And they did move him. But he was convicted uh, along the same lines of that, the other group, the rest of them in that group. Well, that brings us to, to Lindy England and Charles Grainer. They're doing time. President Obama has just said CIA officers who did what they were told and were told were legitimate acts should not be prosecuted. Is this, is this balanced? Is this fair in your opinion? Absolutely not. This is one of the most shameful aspects of the, the, these memos and, and the knowledge that people at the highest levels of our government had about these memos actually sat together and wrote them and rewrote them and crafted them to meet the requirements of these techniques that they wanted to use. Mm -hmm. They were well aware, these people, Rumsfeld, Sanchez, all of them were well aware of these policies and these memorandums while these soldiers were being accused five years ago. And if it was okay, Mr. Former Vice President, mm. uh, if you're saying that this was necessary today and that it produced good intelligence, where were you five years ago stepping up to the plate and saying, hold on, um, we can't discuss this because this is classified information, but these soldiers did not design these techniques. Where were all of those heroes then? Mm -hmm to step up to the plate and to defend these soldiers and to defend me. These were soldiers that were serving in a combat zone that were good Americans and remain good Americans that were so unfairly blamed. Five years this month to, to get these memos mm -hmm. released, uh, declassified and released. And, and people still trying to say that what happened at Abu Ghraib was different than what these memorandums were directing. No, it was not. 
Where do we go from here? I, I would think your perspective is unique, and maybe you should get two votes on this if we were putting it to a plebiscite. Where do we go from here in terms of investigating this, in terms of prosecuting what these people in the higher echelons of the Bush administration did? Is it, is it contrary to morale in the army, in the military? Is it contrary to the morale of the country? Where do we go? It causes confusion. It causes confusion in the military and outside of the military. It causes confusion around the world, quite frankly, because... People did hold the United States of America to a higher standard, and we exemplified mm -hmm. uh, a higher standard, and we were the standard bearer. And then all of a sudden, 9-11 happened, and there was an easy excuse, unfortunately, uh, to abandon all of those things that we stood for. And, and it makes it very, very difficult for us to regain our footing as a nation of people who care. Mm -hmm. uh, I have said and continue to say that if this becomes a political issue, shame on the administration or shame on the Senate and the House for allowing it to happen. Because this needs to be uh, certainly an investigation or an inquiry independent of any political affiliation at all. And because the coalition force in Iraq was an international coalition, there should be members from each one of those member nations sitting on that independent council, uh, representing the international perspective on, on these violations. Uh, a, a tribune of the willing. Janice Karpinski, former brigadier general in charge of Abu Ghraib. Thank you for your time. Thank you for this, your service to the country, and especially in the last few years. Thank you for, uh, for tolerating what has gone on around you. Um, thank you very much. Thank you kindly. Privileged to serve.